Israel. Greetings, Reach Taiwit Israel here from Tashio community. It's been some time since we have done a video concerning uh, the livability and sustaining food source resources that we can grow to sustain us and to also keep us in somewhat of a healthy and physical state of being at all times, above all spiritually, mentally and physically as well. So I have been laboring today, this is Yamri Shom, the first day, uh, putting up fencing, mending and digging fence posts, hose to put in posts. Uh, here is the blueberry and see you can see that they are beginning to produce fruit. Uh, I love blueberries, we need to get ahead and weed this out so we will, but the blueberries are coming, look, beautiful blueberries are coming on the bushes we have tons of blueberry that's more than enough to produce for us to eat to share with others uh, and everything is growing and doing quite well I want to give you a view because uh, the, uh, the fall has passed the winter and now we're into the spring so let me just share with you some things you can see what we're doing here this is somewhat of the rough side of Tashua where the mechanics work and all of this this is a project that I will begin here doing uh, next month this is a greenhouse that I'm going to restore for winter production. That's all this will be for, for growing winter food. Let me give you a look at this. Do you hear all that noise? You hear that in the background? These are guineas. You see these birds here? These are guineas. If you're going to have any kind of sustainable living uh, environment, you need some guineas. They will rid the land of bugs and predators that will devour fruit and, and your crops. And these are vital guineas. They will get ticks and all kinds of little bugs that are irritable. But this is the most, this is the best thing to have on any kind of farm environment. Let's, let's get a closer, closer. Here are some here. These are guineas. They will come back and roost in the place that we have for them. These are called French guineas here. They sound the alarm when predators come or there's some kind of danger in the area. And then we have the cows, you can see the cows that have calves. We'll take a look at them. But these guineas are vitally important to sustain a healthy crop because they will rid the property of crickets and, and grasshoppers or locusts they will take care of that they will roam all around this area and then they will they, they will they will eradicate the property of those things listen this is a, pro a project that i will be working on i will show you some of the projects that i've been working on lately i'll uh, give you some what kind of an idea this is a greenhouse we are going to refit this with fiberglass. This is fiberglass. You can see the stacks here. All this is fiberglass. You see this? And what this will serve as, uh, it will serve as a place whereby we can, we can grow all kinds of green. We've utilized this in the past. We've actually uh, not outgrown this, but we are smaller than what we need for this. But this will supply with us with all of the lettuce, and all of the greens you need during the winter and you don't need to heat it you simply need to keep the frost off of it and it will supply us with all kinds of things also the garden will be producing things like kale and collards and broccoli and we grow all of that I want to show you our garden as well but let's take a walk here this is my next project here uh, this greenhouse and I will plant all kinds of berries here in these raised beds these are raised beds that we utilize. I have work to do. Now this area here is somewhat our trash area. You can see as my Aksimiyon pan this, we got some of everything. We keep all junk because we take the junk and we utilize it. We sell it. We take advantage of it and, and utilize the funds here. These are raised beds that we have grown food in, in the past. And so what I will do is we will have blackberries, we will have raspberries, all kinds of berries in these beds. You can come and get fresh berries and eat them. This is my fall job here. This is a job that I will complete during the fall. I wanted to do it this summer, but I will complete this during the fall because I have so many things to do. Let, let us take a look at the cows, all right? Uh, they have been calving. We have uh, quite a few calves. Uh, they're all grass-fed. 
No chemicals or anything like that. You will not, you have not tasted this kind of meat. You don't buy this kind of meat. If you're a meat eater, you don't get this kind of meat out of your health food stores, your health markets. Not like this. I look at the meat when I go to places like Trader Joe's. I go to places like the Earth Fair and the meat looks nothing like these cows when we butcher them. Come on, let's take a, let's take a little trip here. All right, we'll take a trip over to the cows. It's a beautiful day here in Jefferson, South Carolina. It's probably uh, 78 degrees. I have been up since 6 a.m. this morning, working and digging and getting the jobs done that I need to because I will be out of town next week. So I must take care of the affairs that I am there. That, that I need to take care of and, and not leave a heavy load on the other eye. You see the guineas here? They roam, they, they're fucking bugs. Getting those bugs and things that will affect the land. They're getting that up for us. All right, we'll look at the cows here. We'll show you some of the projects I've been working on. This is uh, our area where we keep our gas and diesel. This is very ugly here. This is where we keep our heavy equipment here. This is our workshop. It's ugly. Believe me, it's ugly. It's not tidy. Because the ark are always working there, so it's not the most tidiest of areas. All right, here we, here we are here with the cows. The guineas are roaming. They're taking care of the bugs. If there's a group of you that are looking to purchase land, the first thing I did when we purchased this land, I purchased guineas and just let them out and they began to eradicate the land of ticks and bugs that were detrimental to the growth of crops and other things. The cows, we have not had the rain that we should have uh, and so the cows, the grass is not as it should be, but we do have pasture to put them on, but not right now. We'll let them eat a little more hay as, as long as they sustain their weight. You're trying to not, we're not trying to make them fat. You see this area here as Oxymi and Pan, all this that is fenced in, that this will be the garden next year. These rows are 500 feet long. This is where we will grow our garden next year. We will till this up. We will grow everything from sweet potatoes, everything, pumpkins, everything here. I know that there are those that will question us and say, well, the Torah says you shall not plant different seeds. These are ignorant individuals, you understand? It is appalling that someone would redress us and they buy everything they get out of the stores. Isn't that amazing? Uh, makes you wonder, doesn't it? So the cows are looking splendid. Look at the calves. They have calf and the little ones are rambunctious. Beautiful place, a beautiful lifestyle to live. I will not live in a million dollar house. I love the labor, the work. It's a beautiful lifestyle. Look at the cows. Beautiful. They're growing, they make fat. We put you one, probably once every six months, once a year. We don't eat the meat. Very little meat is consumed here, so it doesn't take much. But look at them. Look at these little ones. All right, and that's the granddaddy, that's the daddy, the big bull here. He takes care of this harem. He takes care of them, just him. He has birthed all of these calves, all of these are his. Beautiful herd, we keep them healthy, feed them. And uh, you see there's a block, there's a sulfur block here uh, that Oxymion uh, in his neighborhood, birth in South Africa, they farmed. So the sulfur is a natural resource. It helps keep down the flies and the things that would agitate the cows that they're worrying about uh, swiping the flies and things. And then they spending energy on that. They don't grow. They don't get fat. That's why the beef you find in the stores uh, is generally, uh, you know, antibiotics and a lot of corn fed cows that's why you have all that fatness in it these cows they're so lean you have to acquire the taste for this kind of meat they're very lean come on Israel, yeah. we're gonna 
take you for a little tour today on some of the agro side of our community here. Show you some of the things that we're doing, some of the things that we're getting done. That, and uh, as we began to progress during the summer months, the spring and the summer months, we will we will keep you updated with videos. Um, uh, I've simply been busy during the winter doing things and taking care of things. We have not simply taken the time. We will show you the greenhouses, what have been done, the harvest of tomatoes. We're still eating tomatoes. We've been eating that. We eat fresh greens all the time. And anytime we want some fresh meats, we have lamb, we have goat's meat, we have cow's meat, we have duck, uh, we have uh, deer meats, we have fresh chickens, we have fresh eggs. It's a beautiful environment. Let me get my tools. I've been laboring over here, and we're going to uh, we're going to do a little venturous tour. All right, come on with me. All right, stay with me, Oxymion. Look at the blueberries. They're beautiful. Ah, oh, sweet. I love the blueberries. They make blueberry muffins here. They make make blueberry uh, pancakes, blueberry waffles. Some of everything. We enjoy the beauty of that. Wonderful food to eat all the time. Let me give you a look at our, we call them wild grapes, but they're scuffadines and scuffanocks. Different variety, different tastes, and they're beautiful. Again, the guineas. You need guineas. You must have guineas when you are trying to propagate, I don't care if it's fruit trees or, or anything, you need the guineas. My tools, I have been using this today, all right? Here get holes. All right, come on, walk with me. Hallelujah. All right. I want to show you the scuffadines and the scuffadines. It's a little great orchids. They're beautiful fruit to eat. Sweet, some tarty, some sour. We have a variety here. These are our scuffadines and scuffadines. Here. These are great. And we will dine on those you that will be with us to a tabernacle. That's when these are generally in production to the September, October time frame. And you can't eat enough of these. You just can't get satisfied eating these at all. Then we have the blackberries here. We'll put out more blackberries this fall. We have the blackberries here that are productive. And in this area, we have an abundance of wild blackberries. We grow them all the time. Come on, we're gonna take a walk, all right? All right, get things done. This is not the most beautiful place in the community here. This is where all the work gets done. The physical work. Repairing and tearing down. The shop here, we got, ah, we got trucks and tractors, as you can see here. All of these vehicles, all of this, we utilize and it breaks down. So we have to have a place large enough to make sure that we can do the repairs here. We have to have a place large enough, beautiful, to do the repairs here. Give you a little tour of the hard side of Teshua. Come on, let me put these tools up here. This is, this is the place, if believe me. So we have trucks. My Oxymion is doing my grill here. This this is a mess. I am going to have this grill ready for tabernacle, the grilled beef, the chicken. I love to cook. So this is being done here. We're working on our diesel truck. We had to rebuild the engine. So there's always work to do here in Tershua. All the time. There is no rest. So everyone is off today taking care of the little personal uh, affairs. We tend to be off every other Yom Rishon, every other Sunday first day. So they are, and take time with their families. And then on the first day, we tend to work until about noon or one, and that's it. We don't labor all day. All right, come on, Yisrael. Let me show you this journey. Look at the pastures here. See how green they are? Beautifully green. Isn't that beautiful? Nothing but turkey litter. The cows down. As you can recall, now this was the fall garden here. Now it is all, look at it. The chickens are here now to take advantage of everything. 
We have the Osterloo black chickens. They lay large brown eggs, beautiful eggs. Yep, 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 yep. So the chickens will, what they will do, they will uh, go and stretch and uh, they will get those bugs that will uh, do damage to the crop. They will eat down everything. And this is where we will grow corn here. This will be the late summer garden with corn and also watermelons. It's a very big bird and they're tasty. If you love, if you love beautiful chicken meat, these are the birds to eat. They're prolific egg layers. And then also they're wonderful meat birds as well. You will enjoy these. All right, moving on. Moving on a little bit. We'll take off this work pelt when we get down into the core of the community. Hallelujah. Always a wonderful thing here because there is always work to do always an abundance of work to do and to keep us busy and it tends to uh, maintain one's health when we are working you need to do physical work sitting in offices all day that that's why most people are protruding and men my age can't do hardly anything barely can walk many of them they hardly can walk i want you to get another look at this at these pastures here look at this just look at this Hand this right here, Oxymio. You can see the beauty. Look at look at all this pasta here. Look at all of this. Look at all of the beauty of it. We have a huge barn here. And one day I will take you through the whole community. You see the grapes again over here? How they are growing, how beautiful they are. Abundantly and wonderfully. Uh, and so the pasta looks very beautiful, doesn't it? Come on, Oxymio. Look. Now this was the fall garden, as I said, it's all done, it's all grown over. We must clean it up and get it ready for the, uh, for the corn and also watermelons. But here we have, right here, we have the garlic that we'll be harvesting next month. Look at the beauty of that. All of this is garlic, can you see that? All of this is garlic here, just garlic, it's getting there. Mmm, you know this is garlic here. All of this is garlic. All of this garlic here, we grow in raised beds. And also we have here garlic around this greenhouse. This is where we do our seeding and planting. And this is a mulch that we purchase here in this area. It comes from, Can from Canada. It's called mushroom compost. Very wonderful and it makes the plants, I will show you, very strong, all right? These are raised beds whereby we just drop seeds in here. We can see how the seeds are producing. We simply just drop them in here just because we utilize this area to seed. The garlic here is growing in these beds beautifully. Take a look inside and show you how the tomatoes have produced all during the fall and winter for us. Here we have our sweet potato slips. Now we will be harvesting this for our sweet potatoes. We put the sweet potatoes in the ground in the winter and then we will harvest this to produce sweet potatoes. We're still eating sweet potatoes from last year. And that will take us through the entire winter into the summer where we're growing other sweet potatoes. These are herbs and things that the Ahot are growing that we will put out in the beds here. Also here, look at, look at, look at the greenhouse. These are the tomatoes and these are green. I, I don't know, I love green tomatoes. Slice, listen. I love them fried, all right? But we're eating an abundance of, look, look at all the tomatoes in here. Sweet cherries. Mmm. We got all kinds here. We got the sweet, we got the tart. Mm. We got gold. Mmm. Mm. Very, very nice. This is the hope job to pick these, but they're somewhat lazy when it comes to that. I think the oxen we have spoil them because we do everything. And they just cook and take care of the babies and so. Alright, these are the beds finished from the kill during the winter. But I will show you the main garden, okay? Come on, walk with me. Garlic. 
apple tree. We got apples. We spray these every week. You have to. With fungicides, all organic fungicides and everything. It's very difficult. Let no one kid you. When you're trying to do everything organically, it's very difficult. It's a difficult job. You must stay on it all the time. It's a, it amazes me. I hear people say to me, Oh, farming is easy. You have never farmed. You haven't grown a thing. You may have a few little boxes around the window. That's not farming. It's laborious. Your back hurts. You bend. But at the end of the day, it's worth it all. I enjoy when I can look at my plate and everything on my plate came from here. That's beautiful. But everything you're eating, you know you have grown it. Ah, oh, isn't that beautiful? I'm going to take out my work belt. I want to show you this solar greenhouse. What I will do the uh, beginning during the summer months, we're going to build a solar greenhouse here. It will take advantage of the solstice. Now what this greenhouse will do, it will give us all the tomatoes and cucumbers and things like that we need during the winter months. It takes very little to heat it and uh, it will take advantage of the winter solstice. We know where the solstice is, the winter sun, it's here for us. This is the pattern from east to west, very low. And so we will build this greenhouse and it will take care of all of our needs here. Here's a prototype of how it will look. Oh. I'll be sure prototype. Let me take this belt off. It's a beautiful environment to live, to bring your children up. It's sad that people say they're Yisra'ya and, and they despise each other. And one of the main obstacles with many is that there's no trust. That's the main obstacle. They don't want no one to lead them. They don't want to have a leader. And it's sad. It's sad. A true leader serves the people. A true leader submits and serves the people. He is not projected above them. That's a true leader. Come on, let me show you this greenhouse. We're trying to get ready for, for Shaul's preparing ourselves, beautifying the communities, always that the grass needs mowing and everything uh, will begin on that on, on Yom Shunei, on Monday, because this is the first day and everyone is resting. But here it is, this is the solar greenhouse. You see the pattern of this greenhouse, how it looks? It takes advantage of the solstice. This is what, if you have a condensed area, this is the kind of greenhouse you want solar. You don't want the conventional one like I showed you my project. That would simply be used for growing things like kale, winter type kale that does well in some of the higher elevations up north, in Pennsylvania and places like that. We have not had many martins. But these are martin gourds here where we we put these out so the martin will come because they will they will, they, will, they will catch all kinds of bugs. And you will learn this in this kind of environment. It's, it's, it's important that you have people that are knowledgeable in one aspect of things, whereby you are not. And you need that. You don't want to try to do everything. I don't want to try to do everything, and I don't do it. I am a delegator. I am not a micromanager. I love to delegate. These are the hub beds with your hope. You keep the hubs, all kind of hubs. Here, that's for medicinal also for culinary so we have all of it we have wild berries around here we have the squirrels and the animals we came to this area there were no squirrels and even no birds on this land I don't know what they were doing what they were using the chemicals but it was bad and then we began to see life began to come the peach trees look at the peach trees there but they're they're producing abundantly. We'll be eating peaches here. All kinds of peaches we have. No. We'll be eating peaches here. They're all, we're taking care of them peaches. They're growing. So that's beautiful. Here's the orchard here. And that's uh, the peach trees and all here in the orchard. 
You can see that as Oximion as he pans that for me. Let them see the orchard. Come on up. Look at this. This is the orchard here. And what we do, we allow the sheep to go in here and keep it grazed down. We try to take advantage of everything. The grass here, we put the sheep here. They graze it down. They prune it up. You see how those trees are pruned? And we've had disease and we've had to remove trees. I can see one we need to remove now. But you have that in this type of environment. But it's very beautiful. We have, uh, we have uh, moved the goats and sheep to a place where they can graze more heavily. Here's God, come on, here's our uh, summer, our fall, uh, spring and, and summer garden. I want to show you some things. This is a beautiful garden. We need to weed it. We'll get that done this week. The corn is up. Come on in the house. <laughs> This is our corn. We have a variety of corn here. We love corn. We're still eating corn, I do believe, but we have corn from last year's crop. This is sugar bonds here. We have uh, extra tender. We have uh, spring uh, treat. We have three different varieties of sweet corn, and they're very delicious. We have fruit here. Here we have all kinds of things. What are these? Ah, well, these are honeydew melons, pearl honeydews. You see them growing? You see this black mulch here? We have, you can see these little, this little, these little ceilings here. That's okra, it's coming up. Now, this is what we call black mulch, and we irrigate everything. You see this black pipe here? We irrigate in it everything. That's one thing, if y'all ever put anything in my heart, he put that. And if you could see beyond this barn here, there's a pond there. And there's a system there. We'll show you that how that we irrigate everything here. Everything is irrigated because we, we are in a drought zone. So if we don't irrigate, this will burn up. So all of these are fruits. They're coming up. We have watermelons here. We have congos here. We have black Arkansas. We have summer squash. We have all kinds of things. We just greeted this. All right. And so this is the carrot here, but we'll have to get back and weed this here. The carrots are growing. Carrots are not the best thing to grow in the spring, as far as I'm concerned. But this is what farming is about. You bend in your back like this. You understand that? You see all these weeds down through here? So you got to go down through here and weed. And I'm a master weeder. You see that? It's better when it's wet here, because what will happen, these weeds will just slide right up. So we get rain, we'll come out and do that when it's raining. Well, these are carrots, you can see these are carrots here, they're growing, carrots right here. And these are our beets here. We have beets that are growing, beautiful beets. There's one thing about beets, you can eat the beets and the tops. You understand? Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. You can eat the beets and the tops. Look at that. Detroit Red. Heirloom. Do you hear that? Beautifully sweet. Ah. Ah. Let me go back into the duck. Carrots here. And look at the beauty of the kale. You just come and pick you some kale you want to eat. Curly mustard. Look at that. All this kale. Some is flowering. Oh, this is the hot mustard. Ah, look at this. Man! Look at that beautiful broccoli. Come on, Oxymia. Come down the road. This is broccoli. We'll harvest next week. This week. Look at all this beautiful broccoli. Look. Up some y'all, just pan this right here, let them see this. I want to stand out here to show you. Show all this beautiful broccoli. Just stand right there up. You see all this wave of greenery here? Look at that. Come down here, Oxum. Look, look at these broccoli heads. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Broccoli. Look at this broccoli. We 
can't eat it all. Th I'll tell you, these mustard greens will make your nose run. These here, they're hot, and they're spicy, and they're delicious. Look at the beautiful broccoli. We'll get some water on this another day, and she's ready. This is ready to harvest here. This is ready to harvest. We got all kinds of broccoli. Then we have kale here. Then here we have, uh, look at this. We have radish, beautiful radish. Beautiful radish. This radish is beautiful. It's uh, in salad. Uh, look at that. You don't need to peel it, but I don't want the sand all in my mouth. Look at this. Let me tell you, it, it's not easy to grow food like this. Well maintenance garden. Mmm. Radish. You know all kinds of green stuff. Look at this broccoli. Look at that. Look at that the wave of green stuff. I want to cut through here. Bugs are back. We need to spray here. We have some that will be coming early. Let me show you some beautiful colors. Let me show you some. Pan that way, Oxymion. Pan the garden that way. Look at this. Come here, my aunt. You see anything so beautiful here? We need to. You see anything so beautiful here? Like these cauliflowers? Look at this. Cauliflowers. Isn't that beautiful? Cauliflowers everywhere. We have cauliflowers that are growing. Funded of that. Look at these beautiful cauliflowers. Isn't that beautiful? These are supposed to be the type that the leaves just fall down. But I see that they are not these. Isn't that beautiful? Cauliflower. See, see in this road here, we need to get on this. Uh, look at the collard greens here. See any colors like that? Look at that. Man. Ah, I got something for you. Come on. Let me show you some cabbages. You see anything like that? Jersey Wakefield. We got all season. Jersey. Look at those guys. Man, look at that. It, don't, it only takes one for this entire community, two at the max. See that? That's full and hard. But it takes labor to get this. Look at this now. These are all season of Dutch flatheads here. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful coleslaw. We have tomatoes and peppers, beans and lima beans. We have another section of the garden down here. We have okra and everything. Just pan this so they can see Aksumio. Look at all this. Isn't this beautiful? Look at it. Look how beautiful this is. You see, I need to get out here and begin to harvest. We'll harvest these beautiful cabbage heads. They're beautiful. We'll kill this and we'll be finished with the cabbages and plant other things. Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Sure it is. Taste it too. Look at that. The colors are just... They're just delicious. Colors everywhere. Beautiful colors, cauliflowers just brimming, everything is just seasonal. This is the fall and this, the spring and the summer garden. Get another pan, Aksumi, on this way. And let the people see that. See all that greenery just a-waving. Isn't it beautiful? You can't do this by sitting in the house watching television now. You have to lay back. I want to show you that have been listening as I broadcast telling you how tired I am. I will show you what I've had to do. I've finished the job. Look at this.
this broccoli. Isn't this beautiful? All kinds of broccoli. Look at that. You can't buy that out of the store like that. That's beautiful. Look at that. That's ready. We must pick that. Broccoli everywhere. We will share it with others. Make sure those, as a certain bug that it will just, it will cause damage on the broccoli plants. It will fly. But the broccoli looks beautiful. The cauliflowers, look at these cauliflowers. It's beautiful. Everything. Beautifully white. Isn't that beautiful? A nice rain would just make this blossom. And it looks as though we may get some, but if we had a rain, that was just mine. The irrigation is beautiful, but the rain is excellent. Isn't that beautiful? Ah, oh, man. Look at this. Look at that. Pallet. Look at those leaves. Beautiful, isn't it? Some of the best leaves to eat are these. Taste better than collards, broccoli leaves. We'll look to put some water on this today and then uh, we'll harvest. When I harvest, hopefully I can show you a video of the harvest. But let me show you what I've been laboring on, what I've been doing uh, over the past month or so with Uck, you safe. And the other arc here, we have been fencing. We're putting up fence to have a place to put the goats and the sheep. We'll go there, come on. I got these because they will come and they will come to me with this. And also we have, look at the tomatoes. Look how beautiful they look. We'll mulch, you see that, that straw there? We'll put that around the tomatoes here. And then we have lima beans here. We have cabbages here. We have Brussels sprouts here. We have Henderson Wakefield here. All this is cabbage. So when this is done, we'll be eating this. We'll have cabbage all during the summer. We'll eat, uh, uh, you know, bountifully. It doesn't take a, a lot of space to grow. This. this space we have is, this is nearly three acres of garden. You didn't see it all, if oxymi on pan, if you look at that, as that flows down the hill, there's another section of this garden. Another section. This is enough to feed 200 people consistently, constantly, and no one is hungry. This is Teshua community. This is part of Teshua across the street as well. Then we have another section of, as well of Teshua. Come on with me. We're housing our goats and sheep over here. Uh. You have to lock this because people will steal animals from you. Oh, look at that. You understand, this is what I've been doing, fencing, putting up fence for the animals so we can contain them. You know, living in a place like this, you, you know, something as large, a hundred acres, we have land and property in other places as well. We have another uh, set of property uh, that is dissected with the creek. And also we have another piece of land that we purchased that we were hoping to do orchards on that things like uh, blueberries, uh, blackberries, scuffadines and scuffanogs, about two acres of that. See here are the wild blackberries here. They grow wild. These are wild blackberries. Let me give you a little, this is, this is not the most beautiful sight here, but you have to have equipment like this. Something like a crawler. You have back holes, skid load, and things like that. You've got to have that 
to work in an environment like this. But on a smaller scale, you don't. A, a bobcat or skid loader will be more than enough. Yep. Here are the sheep here. They're out here. They love this kind of grazing, nibbling here, nibbling there. Yep, yep. So we have the sheep and the goats here. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, yep. Dusty, we need some rain. Yep. Yep. the male goats here. Strong, look at that. Clips of what I've been doing, the fencing. It's about 15 acres or better. Yep. This is where we store all of our wood because everything we do, we heat by wood. Our water systems to heat the homes. We have a large facility that dispense water to the home, hot water. So we use wood to make sure that there's sufficient water to bathe. So that's one of our businesses that's the only business we have we do tree service the Aka trees and this is what heats the homes in the winter wood everyone has a wood burning stove everyone and then what we do here we have we mulch limbs and branches from cutting down trees and we bring that here and we make mulch pots the mulch we put in the gardens are raised beds to grow food. It decomposes and we utilize it. We don't split this by, I split mine that way with them all. I do it for exercise. But uh, we have a horse here. This is a log splitter that splits, that splits the wood for us. this big splitter. We'll go through all of this wood during the winter. We're going to need more than this twice this month. And so this is what we do. The arc, we put the wood here, one stands here, we load it on a dump truck, and we dispense it through the homes. So this is what I've been doing here. I have been fencing. I've been doing this. And believe me, this is not easy work. So for the last month or so, I've been doing this to get the goats and the sheep here. Putting up fence. Vital. We're putting up this fence here. Driving each one of these T-poles, we have to put these stabilizers in here and you have to concrete them. And we have to pull the wire and get it tight keep predators out. Let me show you how we, this, this, these are new compost piles. That's why we take the bulldozer, that big bulldozer, we turn this over. But what we do here, let me show you one that's, that's nearly compost and one that is compost. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful environment here. 
This land right here will make a very beautiful community. Just this alone. 16, 17, 18 acres, 17 acres is more than enough. This is new stuff that they have brought in here. See that? You see it? And this is stuff that has been composting for a while. That's been composting for a while. All right. Now I'll show you this pile that has decomposed quite well. This is where we put the goats and sheep to eat all of this. And they will nibble here. This will keep them fat and condition them because we have heels so they can run. Room to spread out and move. I will say to any of you all that's looking into starting a community, uh, the smaller animals will be best. You need space for cows. So the smaller animals like sheep and goat, and you don't want to try to have too many. Goat's meat, if you eat meat, it is delicious. So is lamb's meat. Very delicious. So we have all of this foliage here for them to eat and they'll just go through here and graze and nibble and eat and get fat they really will this is the type of environment you want for goats and sheep like this they can browse eat they'll eat this we have quite a bit for them but they'll eat this I want to show you we've had to put all this fence in all of this it was hard work believe me it was very hard Hot and hard. So we constantly turn the piles over, the compost piles to bio, for the, uh, the bio activity to take place to break it down so that it is suitable uh, for planting and we can utilize it in the garden. Now this I will utilize in the greenhouse. <laughs> for raised beds that we will grow in. I will utilize this. This is richly and this pile here. This is broken down quite well. See? You see the difference? See that? We will we'll utilize that. And this pile. And the, the main ingredients to all we do, I'll show you. Follow me. I don't want to pick this up with my hand. I don't have, oh, I have my gloves on. This here, this is another pile that is, has decomposed or composed quite well. Quite well, this time. See that? This one is quite well. See all that? Beautiful soil. But this is the, this is the catalyst here. This stuff here. This is the gold here. It's stage two. If you were here, you would not want to touch this. That's turkey litter. Dung. Ah. All the nutrients, nitrogen, phosphate, phosphate phosphorus. We do put potash down. And this right here. That's why the garden is so green, the potash and uh, mm, the turkey litter, the turkey litter. So we purchased this from the turkey farmers here at $40 a truck load, a dump truck. And then we have farmers here that we can barter and work things off. We may do a tree for them. We can't do anything. We can build, we can roof, we're mechanics, electricians, brick masons, carpenters, you name it. We can uh, develop websites, but this is what we do. And so we will barter with people in cases whereby uh, well, we don't have the funds to purchase certain things. And living in this kind of environment here, it's easy to do that. We owe a man $400 for that we get the turkey litter from. And we owe him, and every time we get turkey litter from him, we tell him we owe you $400. When you have something for us to do, we will do it. He will have something for us to do, believe me. Believe me. So this is a Kashua 2 here. This is where we live. This is how we live. 
Maybe I show you the other part, why not? I don't know how long this video will be, but that's all right. We have a beautiful place here. And then the, as uh, the summer goes, we will show you the community and everything. You will be with us on Sha'ut. We're gonna have uh, hopefully two services outdoors. They're gonna be splendid, beautiful. But in the plaza, we will dance and sing and preach and fellowship. It's gonna be a beautiful time. And after the service that, that Shabbat evening of Sha'ut, we'll be entering into Sha'ut, we will fellowship and dined uh, and have a wonderful time we always have beautiful times here we really do we have fellowship a kinsman spirit that we look after each other and take care of each other and we uh, fellowship we dine every day together with each other you can't get by that here you must dine breakfast and dinner you don't sit out from that you come you come unless you cannot make it in the other time we come we come together that's what we done everyone has their own facilities in their home but we eat every day in our facility a beautiful dining hall too that's what we eat so this is the this is part of Teshua here this is Teshua too this is basically for for what you see here we utilize this for grazing for staging and things like that. That's what we utilize it for. I will show you Teshua 3. And then one day we'll show you the other other part of the community here that Yah has granted. He blessed us with all of this land. We owe no one anything. We have never been burdened down in debt. The small finance that comes in, we utilize it with great carefulness. We owe no man anything in that sense. We're not bound. And all the resources comes into one place. And everyone shares in that. This Ak that is filming me, he works all day here. So I came to me, I came your safe. I mean Ak your safe. And so and myself and Zakim Ahalayan that we we all work here. And so the funds come into one central place. We take care of the electric, the gas, because we cook with gas. We have wood. Get wooden stoves to cook as well when there is no gas and then so those funds where there's enough funds to make sure that he has funds and Akiyabin and his issue he works all day does a magnificent job all of his work is done here and so it's enough to make sure he has funds his child his wife there's enough and that's how we do it and no one is going to tell us how to do that all right so this is Teshua too. You see the goats, look, look how beautiful that is. My! Look at the sheep. Sufficient water here. As I said, we have these, the sulfur mineral block here. Our Oxineon, born in South Africa. He knows, his, they had a thousand acre farm, so he knows how to farm. And so we put these blocks out, they look that, and it takes care of them. It helps fight off the flies and the little ticks and things that will bite them. They have so much to graze on, they just eat. You notice the goats and the sheep, they do separate, they don't stay with each other. Although they're the same family, they're both the same. But the goats will not intermingle with the sheep. The sheep will eat here, you see the goats over there. We just butchered around four of these that I will drop off at another community that I had had fellowship in the past. We're gonna bring, take them an offering of some of this beautiful organic meat. As I said to you all, uh, a place like this, this large, you will have to have some heavy equipment. You're not gonna get by with light equipment. When I say heavy equipment, I am talking about a back hole, I'm talking about something like a bulldozer, like this one here. I'm talking about a skid load or something like that. You're going to have to have that. It's just, you're gonna to have to have it. This, this is a, I've always said there were three, four investments that I made, that we made when we came here that was vital. One of the first ones, when we purchased a John Deere tractor, that was the most vital investment. We paid $5,000 for that tractor. That was 18 years ago. The second one was to purchase a backhoe. The third one was to purchase a skid loader. 
And this gem here, this beast, that's a monster. This big beast here, she will, she will take everything down. This is a beast. She will tear it down. You need something like this to clean areas off and things like that. You're not going to do it anyway. You can't do that uh, like one uh, uh, in the old days. You're going to need something like this unless you got you got manpower. And most men can't handle this kind of work. Believe me, they cannot. They say, oh, I can't do it. Get them out there and find out. I want to show the rest of the garden that we want to show you to show it too. This may be quite long, but that's all right. You don't have to watch it all. Take time and watch what you want to. That's all right. We have locks on these gates here because we have these fellas around here. They will do silly stuff. Come on back into the community. You know, people around here are silly. They, you know, they, they think we're some kind of strange people and they're the ones that are strange. I want to show you garden two. How you doing? All right. The remaining of this garden. Let me show you. This is, as I said, this is, this is part of the garden. I want to show you the, 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 uh, the length of this garden. It's quite large. Cabbages and everything here, the tomatoes. We're trying different methods of growing the tomatoes. We're always experimenting to see what works. We have ordered some of the uh, heirloom organic seeds for pumpkins, and winter squash and summer squash. That will be coming next week. One of the I order from, from Johnny Seeds, Seed Exchange, and also Baker Seeds out there in uh, Missouri. Those are basically the three places because we've always had great results. All these seeds came from there. They're heirlooms or some are hybrid as well. Okay? So don't, if you don't grow and you don't garden, don't, don't question me about hybrids, okay? Everything you eat today is hybrid. Don't question me. Don't write me about that. All right, heading a little farther down here. We have okra. I will plant some watermelon. That was cause them to grow faster. We plant melons here. We got okra here. We got three more rows that we'll put things. We got beans here. And then we will plant pumpkins and all kinds of things here. This is enough space to feed 250 people easily. We're a small community. We should have at least 100 people here. We have had that many people, but they have left, but that's fine. Let me show you some of the other aspects of Teshu. Isn't this a beautiful place? You see, cleaning this off, it takes a bulldozer of that size. To clean up this kind of land, you need a bulldozer. Let's move a little farther. This is one thing that we did as we came here, myself, the Ark, Ark Simeon, and uh, Ark. We always, we were always looking to the future. We're always looking to what we need to do later on. And so one of the first things we did, we did not have the ability to do it. We had uh, a contractor to build this large pond down here, which was necessary. And then we still have more room if we need to, to expand the garden, but that's more than enough for us. We're not gonna expand that anymore. If the community grows by 20, 30 people, of which we welcome Yisraya to come. Uh, you're welcome to come. You let us know. Just dress appropriately. The women don't come here with short pants on. Don't dress naked because we're not going to let you in here. That's just a fact. You're not coming. You want to see our processes? We have no problem. I'll show you how we make our fertilizer and all of that, how we fertilize the garden. And so this is part of Teshu here. All of this is Listen to this, listen, listen. The serenity is quiet. Beautiful. Uh, come on. With me. This pond, we need to get some aeration.
situation in here is somewhat stagnant, but it certainly is a pond whereby we have a pump that when we need to, we have a pump that can pump water from this pond to that garden. That's why we build the ponds to irrigate. You must have water to grow crops. Let no one kill you. you. You have to have a consistent water. The crop is just like our bodies. You got to feed it water. You got to feed it fertilizer. You can't fertilize it once a week. I mean, once a month. It's got to eat, just like you eat. And we have to fertilize the crops, all right? So this is a massive pond. We have bluegill, we have crappie, we have bass, and yes, we have catfish, not to eat, but to do the best they can to keep the pond clean. So this is a tremendous body of water right here for us. But we have to, if we need to, we can always carry water, pop water up so that we can have water. One thing about living here, there's always repairs to do. And stuff like this. You come in here, you see that? You do what you can to. Take the multitude out. Hang it up a little bit. How about that? Everyone here carries a multitude. All right, see, this is the beautiful body of water. We fish here. Everything here. Beautiful body of water. This pond back in the days cost us six thousand dollars to do. You can see the rippling, you see all that down there at the bottom? That's fish down there. You see that? You see that on the water down there? Oh, that could be just a rippling. It looks like that fish down there. We do have fish. Look, there's one right here. Look. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. Right in there. It's a bluegill. Right there. We do have fish in here. We fish. I haven't fished in a while. I need to come down and fish in with I love fishing. And so this is where we put the goats and things. They eat down in here. This is kind of the wilderness place here. But I want to show you test your three. We have another aspect of our community. I hope the batteries last. This is quite long, but that's all right. We're going to put it up. Unedited as well. All right, this is where the works began. Here, you got to jump over this. One. All right. All right. You gonna hold that for you? All right, Oxymion. We are both in our listen. We are both in our late 50s, mid-late 50s, both of us. So he is not a spring chicken, neither am I. Come on with me. Uh, as you see, we walk down this road. And as you look here, all of this is textual community. Down this road from my house. If I come out of my door, if I come out of the front door of my house, and walk from one end of the property and then also the property on this side it begins up here we will show you that when we come back up the road but from my house to the end of our property back it's one mile that's how far it is all right come on we're not walking to the end today all right but this is our property here all of this the pond and all of this is ours we have a massive creek down here it's called fork creek you understand that all creeks and things, although they may run through your property, they belong to the state. I don't care where you live. You don't own the creek or the water rights or things like that. You can't dam it up or anything like that, but we can take advantage of the water. So we have a creek here called Fork Creek that runs through our property, dissect our property, and runs into a lake here, not far from us. So all of this is our property, all of this. All this is Teshio community. We could put another 20 houses, 30 houses if we wanted to. And of course, we are grandfathered in whereby we can do things whereby people that are moving here. Now it's difficult to do it, to start this work and to do what we have done over nearly 18 years. You couldn't do it financially unless you had a reservoir, unless you had uh, a tremendous amount of money. 
this was done with little of money, very little money. We bought 60 acres back in that day for $25,000. To buy that today, 60 acres of land, 70 acres, it will cost you minimum nearly a quarter of a million dollars, even in a place like this. So we'll take a large amount of money. This is the creek I'm talking about called Fork Creek. This is Fork Creek right here. Massive creek, this is our property here. And this creek right here dissect our property on this side. All of this you see here, all of this wooded area here, this is our property. Let me show you what it looks like. I haven't walked down through the path in a while. It is overgrown somewhat, but it's a beautiful place. It's beautiful. It has great potential. It really does. Let me show you what it looks like. Ah, oh, you can smell the beauty of the honeysuckle. The fragrance here is so precious. My, it's not like in the city. You even look healthy and live healthy. How about that? All right, we're gonna make one last run. And I'm going to go home. I've been working. I have been up since 6 a.m. this morning working, doing some things, trying to beautify the community. I'm always doing that because the up that work, I don't want them coming in and say, where's the money going? They know where the money is going. You understand? So we're always trying to beautify the community. So when they come home, they have a very pleasant, beautiful place, very clean place. They pass the garden and the fruit trees, they can stop and they want to pick some fruit to take home. They can do that. That's vitally important. Must be a confidence and a trust of each other. We must have that. This is Teshua 2. Now Teshua 2 goes all up this hill. You can span, span that. It's all around that hill and this is part of the hill. This is part of our community as well. Come on in the house. All right, we haven't been this way in a while. I'm hoping we don't run up on no snake in here. I usually take my stick with me. You may run up on a snake lying in the road here. I usually take a stick for the purpose. All of this is our property here. This is Teshua 3. We have the main community, Teshua 1, Teshua 2, this is test two or three right here. Well, it's not as bad as I thought it was. But this would be a beautiful place to put houses on the creek and put cabins. Some cabins down here would be a beautiful place to do it. Of course, I have the vision to do it, just don't have the manpower and the finances to do it. Look at this. Beautiful in here. All of this is our property. All of this. We have quite a bit of property. Yeah. Not is that bad. All of this. You see the property up here? This is beautiful here. I love this here. The trees. Look at that tree down there. We have some humongous trees. Look, isn't that a big tree? <laughs> Look at that tree there. My! And this way. Look at these trees. I mean, look how big those trees are. We say that so one day we need to cut them to heat our place. We can. Look how beautiful this is. Oh, man. This is beautiful. It's very cool in here, too. Quiet. You hear the creek? Ah, it's a very beautiful place. Cool in here, you build your cabin in here. You can see this is, the ark would put their stands here in the trees to hunt deer in here. And they hunt down here during the hunting season and this is where they knock out deer as well. We, this land has just been sitting here for years. Look at that tree, that, that, look at that tree there. Look how big that tree is. That's a huge tree, isn't it? That's huge. I know there's a red wood, 
trees in California, but those are huge. Look at that tree. I marvel at these trees. I, I wouldn't cut them down because they're so beautiful. Look at that tree. But when we have to, we will cut them down for wood. We save the trees on our property. Say, look how beautiful that tree is. Look at that. <laughs> these are the kinds of trees they make furniture out of. These kinds of trees. These popular. That tree right there, if we wanted to sell it, we probably could get, I would say, close to $2,000. You're an excellent penny for a tree like that. But we're not selling them. So all of this is our property. Beautiful. Ah, oh, it's so wonderful here. It's just, this is rocky, so I have to be careful. I want to walk backwards, but I don't want to trip and make myself look like a buffoon either. And hurt myself above all things. You have to be careful in here. It's a beautiful place in here. I, in, in here, it's just very cool here. Very, it's a nice breeze. Well, it would take labor, but it can be done. Look at that tree there. Look at that oak tree. Look at that. Beautiful. Look at this tree right here. Isn't that massive? Nice? Look at that. <laughs> Look at this. That's beautiful. Uh, I don't like cutting down trees. Look at that tree. I don't even like killing the predators. I don't even like killing. Uh, we don't even. Have to, nah, they take something. Let them take it. Now we will kill the dogs. Now nah. your dogs don't. They don't come on our property. We will kill them. The drop of the hat. Look at that. That's a lot of wood there. That's a must burning. If we get to the point where we have to be very, we have to be very frugal. In my days as a young lad, we only had enough wood to do the fire at night. We will always have, we have central places here that you can come and stay warm all day. You want to go sleep in your homes, you can, if it comes to that. This is the creek here. And so I'll probably run through this creek here. See the creek here? This is where our property runs. See all these beautiful trees in here? Beautiful big trees. Beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? Love to get the goats in here. They would just eat this up. One day we will fence this, but not now. This years to come. We're hoping to clean this off and make this out of a hay field. This is, a, this is a deer stand where our ox hunt because the goat come here on the creek and drink and they get in the stand right here and they knock them out. All right, we're going to head back to the house. Beautiful straight pine tree. Beautiful piece of property. Listen, you, you can't do it. I say to people, they will say, well, we want to do this. Well, I will say, what you do if you have a little congregation, why don't you all right there in the place where you are, you all sell your homes and live with each other. Do that. Take the resources, utilize them, and then you save the monies whereby you can buy a piece of land. Grow gardens, take the backyard, make it beautiful, make the community say, oh, that's so beautiful. Do beautiful raised beds and make it, uh, make it uh, a, a beautiful thing in the community, that it become incorporated in the community. Don't do it raggedy, don't do it ugly. You can't do that. Most people don't want to do that. Because we're so used to having our own. That's the selfish mentality we have. We're not going to do it. And it's a fact. I tell you, the mosquitoes are here. They're buzzing because of the hum humid, and then you have quite a bit of moist in here. But this, look, look, look at this beautiful place here. Almost like a canopy in here, isn't it? That's what it's like, a canopy. Trees are beautiful. You just walk, I, I tell you, I love to come here in the winter because it's cold. You don't have the bugs. You can walk this, and it's just beautiful down here. Beautiful. So all of this, as you look back to all of this, is our property is joined with our other property here, but the creek dissects it. It's a beautiful piece of land, beautiful. All of this, all of this along the creek we own. What they say this, Yisraya, 
I'm the type that this, to me, there's nothing more important than the community as a whole. But in the sense that me having a thing for me, it doesn't mean a damn thing, and I may use that expression, because this is not what I'm about. I want to make sure that if something happens to me, all those that have given, they have labored, this is theirs. It belongs to them. This man behind the camera, it belongs to him. He can't sell it. He can live here till he die. And when he falls dead, who cares? Look at that beautiful tree. I just, I, that amazes me how beautiful those trees are. You don't want to cut that down. I don't. Look at those trees. I don't want to cut those down. Those trees are old. At least 50 years old. 40, 50 years old. 40 years old at least. So this is Teshua 3. We have gone to Teshua, Teshua 1, Teshua 3. And then we have Teshua 4, which is located in another area. Beautiful piece of land. So we have four pieces of property that we have been able to purchase. There's a man that has property adjacent to this. He wants to sell it to us, but we're not buying no more land. We don't need any more. There's one thing about land, as an old farmer around here said to me, they don't make that anymore. You don't buy, you don't make land. So it's wonderful to have, to have land that, above all, you can grow, you can assemble, if you have to put up a tent. We did that. You put up a tent, here's the first thing. That's the tabernacle of Yah, the tent. So we put up a tent here. And we celebrated, we sat in the tent, we ate in the tent, we fellowshiped here outdoors. We had no running water, we had to go for water in. We had to buy 55 barrel, 55 gallon barrels to get water. We began to try to understand the dynamics of the community. We began to integrate as far as purchasing things and setting up accounts here. We have never faltered, not one dime, not one brown penny. As a matter of fact, we will purchase things, put them on the account today and pay it tomorrow. That's what we, and people, because they know that we are people that are honest and that we are we are people that take care of the affairs, they deal with us. We can go on this little town and get anything. No one says, all right. That's how it is. You just don't go into a community and explode in the community because you're going to cause people to resent you. As we were traveling down the road, this man, he's driving down two miles an hour, trying to figure out what we're doing, just looking. <laughs> See the beautiful garden, all he can say, he, I could hear him talking about the garden, because it's beautiful. People would drive, what about some of those greens? I just called and, oh, do you sell them? I said, do you have a bag, a trash bag or something? Oh, no, sir. I'll bring you one. Come in and pick all you want. No smoking anything on the ground. Pick all you want, all right. Oh, sure, do appreciate it. Sure. You want to pick it, you can have it. But we're not picking it for you, all right? Come on. You Our property goes all the way up this road here, all the way up this here, all the way up this road here. It goes up that way. As I said, it's one mile from my front door to the end of our property and back is one mile. One mile. Ah. Uh, we're going to stop the video here. This is Teshua. God has blessed us greatly. He's granted unto us much riches. Our labor has, has been fruitful. He has granted unto us great fellowship and friendship among each other. And that's a beautiful thing. We will be getting back with other videos showing you uh, the progression, the growth of the community. We have a very beautiful community. You will have to come and visit and see it. The camera shows so much. But once you come here, you say, oh, wow, this is beautiful. All right, this is Re'ach Da'i Yisra'yav from the heart, the level of Teshua community. We greet you all and say you have a, you have a day that is brach and fill other, the rechai the blessings of Yan Yoshua. Yabrach, shalom, shalom. All right, let's go find.